Alright, what's going on family? It's your boy Malin. Just living the dream today on a crappy Saturday outside, as you can see. Um, today, I want to talk to you about something I've been fooling around with lately. Just trying to, you know, kind of like a proof of concept kind of thing, because it's kind of buggy. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But uh, basically, I got inspired after I saw a post by uh, uh, Zach S of the Rain Team on the uh, DJ Tech Tools website. Uh, on the post about the uh, review for the Rain 68, where he was talking about using the uh, fifth insert. Um, and this is a whole, you know, the sound card aspect of the, the mixer to... Uh, Effects uh, to affect the channels that you're playing. So uh, basically, running a VST on uh, you know in a digital audio workstation like Ableton or Reaper or whatever, a Logic, and uh, you know sending the audio of that, and then having it come back through the fifth insert, and uh, you affect the audio that you're playing with that. So that you know what that's kind of cool. And you know I, I played around with it just you know strictly just using um, Ableton and you know not having Scratch Live open or anything like that. But I thought you know what the hell? Why can't we just uh, why not with uh, Scratch Live open? So I figured. Uh, yeah, let's let's give it a roll, and uh, I kind of got it working, so uh, let me uh, guide you through that uh, right now. So basically what you need, you're going to need obviously a Rain 68. Uh, if uh, you don't have a 68, I mean this technically is possible, if you have another mixer, you can use the flex effects, or sorry, the, uh, you know, the insert controls in the mixer. You've got to have a second sound card though, or use a sound card on the computer. It's, it's messy, I don't want to talk about it, I haven't done it, so good luck if you want to try that. Um, but for this, yeah, this instance we're using the Rain 68. Uh, basically, you got to have both USB hooked up, so let's go ahead and do that now. I am running a MacBook Pro with the latest version of Ableton and Serato 2.2, 8.0, .2, whatever for Ableton. Um, so, first step, I find that running Ableton first uh, works better. Uh, sometimes it gets all tricky. Um, what you're going to need to do, oh, you also have to have the core audio uh, drivers installed for the uh, 68, and those are available. Uh, I believe in the download section on the website on the forum, or uh, I don't know, it's on the Strato site, I'm sorry. So that will uh, I'm off. Okay, so what I typically do is I just get rid of the MIDI track because I can. Um, so, first off, you gotta go to your preferences. You gotta make sure your 68 is set as your audio source. So, core audio and then 68 for input and output. Now, to make things easier myself so I don't see all the other inputs, I only need 9 and 10. 9 and 10 is the USB fifth insert for the flex effects. That is the one you wanna have. Uh, that's where the audio is gonna be going in and out of. So, for input and output, that's all I have selected 9 and 10. Okay. So, go back out. Um, in the audio, uh, you gotta make sure. Sorry, you gotta when uh, on the track view, you gotta enable uh, in and out, right there in the uh, view there, uh, so you can see everything. Now uh, from audio from, you gotta choose external in, and then you gotta choose nine and ten, and then for monitor, you gotta choose in. Uh, some reason it doesn't it's finicky with off, so don't do it. Uh, audio two, you gotta choose external in again. Then we're choosing nine and ten. Now. What, uh, the way Zach described it in the post is that you now you just drop any VST on this channel and, you know, it'll affect whatever you send through it, which is true, but uh, I kind of, it kind of seemed like it was an always an always on, always off kind of thing, and I wanted, you know, more control of, like, kind of like a, re you know, a normal effect where you, you know, wet dry, you want to bring it in a little bit, you know, a lot, so that's what I wanted to do. So I thought, well, instead of running the VST on the actual audio channel that we're bringing the audio in from, why not throw it on a you know, send return track. So let's uh, let's just grab uh, Zach was talking about uh, true, waves true verb. So let's throw that on the uh, a uh, return track here. It'll pop up. Oh, if I drop it, there we go. Uh, let's bring it over here. So you can see everything. Let's go load a standard preset cathedral. Yeah, sure, that'll be good. Um, and now since that's on the uh, send return track, we also have to go down to the audio two. From there and choose external out and 9 and 10. Okay, so now anytime what happens is anytime you put audio through on the mixer, if you uh, let me make sure I turn that off. So once you pop in a flex effects on a channel that you're playing on, blah 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 blah, you have the fifth insert button on, and then you punch it in with the flex effects and you turn it up, audio is going to go into the computer and you'll see movement on your VST and all that kind of stuff, and, and yay, you'll get levels. Now, what I want, like I was saying, I'd like to have wet dry control over the effect. So what I do is, since the 68 is a the god of all MIDI mixers, <laughs> well not really, but you know what I mean, it, you can map anything and everything on this mixer to, uh, to the software, I'm going to map the, uh, the level depth knob to the uh, send A knob of the track. So all you gotta do in, uh, I don't know how you do it in other programs, but in Ableton, pretty simple, just hit MIDI, 
get the controls come up. Let me move that out of the way. Select A. I can't. I'm trying to watch the screen in this. Okay, A. And then we move the. Do, 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 moved it. Okay, great. Saves it. Hit MIDI again. So now when I move this, it moves the send. Ta da! Awesome. Okay. So now, now here's where the fun part comes up. Like I was saying, there's some issues sometimes. Sometimes Scratch Live, when you open Scratch Live, it'll take over the 68, but it shouldn't because I have both USBs hooked up, so it should let me run, you know, two instances, you know, using the sound card on the uh, computer. It should it should work pretty much, but uh, let's let's hope it doesn't uh, swat away Ableton. Sometimes it'll just kick Ableton out of, uh, see, it just kicked it out right there. Now it's gone. Awesome. So let me uh, just quit out of Ableton Quick Times. Quit out of Scratch Live. No, back up later. Try this again one more time. <laughs> I did this video yesterday, and uh, it, well, first off, it was dark as hell, so I figured I'd record it, but it took like 12 minutes because this crashed a billion, jillion times and it kept on kicking me out. Uh, Serato, why did I open Serato? I didn't want to open Serato. I made stupid mistakes like this, blah, 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 blah. So let's just, sorry. So, like I said, Typically what I've noticed is that opening Ableton first and then Serato works better. Um, that's when I've had it work. Uh, I do have the bridge and I do have it disabled because that definitely would uh, cause some issues. But if you are using a different workstation such as, you know, like I was saying, Reaper, Logic, whatever lets you, you know, have that kind of functionality, you're not going to have to worry about the bridge. Keep it enabled for all I care. Um, word. Alright, so again, firing up the Ableton. Oscar is just chilling there, living the dream. Holy Ableton, come on, what is this? Wow. The laundry's done. All right. Audio is disabled. Oh, that's good. All right, well, let's, let's just see here. Core audio. Yeah, core audio. There we go. Okay, so as I said, pick your 68. La -da -da -la. Uh, I like, sorry, the thing I, like, I did not mention, I like to keep the latency low because you want it really nice and low because it's got to go, you know, if it's basically when, the, when you're getting audio from Scratch Live, it's going from the computer to the mixer and it's going back from the mixer to the computer to be affected and then back out again to the mixer. So the less latency you can have, the better, right? All right, so let me just quickly set up what we had going there before just to make it quick and easy. You saw me do this already. 910 in 910 audio 2 910 cathedral all right now let's try this again the dream is it alive is the dream alive fuck what the fuck ableton Fuck this, eh? I don't know why it does this. Like, it just... See, now... See, I think this is a bug. Because now it shows the Serradio virtual audio device. But the bridge is disabled, so why is that coming up? Alright, let me try. Okay, so that one's controlling Scratch Live. Let's see if I'm plugging this USB will do anything. I'm sorry. There we go. Okay. So I guess for a fix to that, if that ever happens to you, just unplug, find, you know, unplug the USBs and plug them back in, and uh, you should uh, be good. Okay. So finally, here we are. Let's put on a song. I'll just put on this Basto song I was using because I kind of like it. Um, so we have audio playing. So like I was saying, engage your flex effects. So now audio is being sent. Sorry, I gotta use your fifth insert too. So now audio should be sent. Should be coming into Ableton and yes, yes it is. So there's the insert right there. Now like I was saying, the wet dry is what's gonna send it to the VST, right? So when I move that knob up, we should see levels in the VST. And, oh, I gotta map it again, sorry. So now when I move this, I'm gonna get levels. And that's getting sent back out to the mixer. 
So let's... Alright. So now when I engage this, I'm not going to hear any drop in the level. Good. Oh, email. So now let's see what we got. And there's the... There's that reverb post fader. Then bring it back down and there it's gone. So, it's pretty cool. I mean, the thing is though, I mean, there's little, I don't know how, how if you really want to be rocking this, you know, during a live set on the radio, whatever, I sure as hell won't be running this. You know, it's just, it's just cool right now. Um, what I have noticed though in the past when I've been playing with this is that Serato will just say, hey, fuck you, and just quit randomly. I don't know why, um, yeah, that's weird, uh, so, I wouldn't recommend using this in a live situation, but it is, uh, it's quite cool, so, like I was saying, turn it on, post fader, you know, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, tidbits and known issues, like I was saying, yeah, it, it will crash. It sometimes crashes. Um, another thing is, uh, from what I've noticed, you know, most, you know, some of the effects uh, require, like, you know, reverb in the robot or whatever, you know, it's all, it's not really a time-based kind of uh, effect. It's just strictly dry, wet, throw the audio in, see what you get back, right? But for stuff like filter, flanger, and echo, there's a time-based thing, you know, it's based off of BPM. Now, you don't necessarily have to be running in true verb or, or you know, in, uh, I just used it for this example. You can run any VST. It doesn't have to be way, you know, it could be Ableton's, any of Ableton's audio effects, anything, pretty much. But the, what I've noticed, is, I mean, I, I put the, the flanger on and I was like, oh, okay, it's kind of flanging. But it's like, okay, well, how do I, if I wanted to, you know, it's kind of like an auto flange. Well, how do I, how am I going to make it um, move to the, you know, the frequency of the music? If, it's, if I'm playing 128... I want the, you know, the filter to be, you know, if I set it to 132, I want it to be ramping up and then, you know, ramping down at the right time. So, haven't got around trying to do that, you know, I'm sure there might, you know, there's not, I don't think there's a tap, not really a tap function in, uh, actually, yeah, sorry, I'm a liar. There is a tap function in Ableton. So, I guess you could technically map your tap to Ableton. I guess you could. I haven't tried it, though. So, uh, if you want to do it, uh, do it. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, it's pretty damn cool. This mixer is a beast. The routing options are incredible. So well, big ups to Rain for their uh, uh, their work on this mixer. I love it. And uh, yeah, big shout out to uh, all you guys doing your thing. And uh, yeah, it's uh, DJ Mal from uh, the lovely city of Toronto. And I uh, wish you the best. Good day, folks.